Uh, SHAP uh, is a post hoc explanatory method. SHAP stands for uh, Shapley Additive Explanations. The idea is that you apply SHAP to a black box model with known inputs, known output, and you know base rate, which you can think of as the average prediction. Then with the help of the explanations, you're able to uh, understand the direction and the magnitude of each feature's contribution to the predicted output. Uh, by direction, we mean the presence of the feature supports or contradicts the prediction. By magnitude, we're referring to the size of the influence that each uh, feature has. The SHAP explanation method is an implementation of Shapley values, which is a concept in cooperative game theory named after Lloyd Shapley. Uh, the idea is that members should receive payments or shares proportional to their marginal contributions. And in order to distribute the gains fairly, we need to establish what value does a person add to the group. Uh, interestingly, Lloyd Chapley introduced his theory in 1951 and went on to win a Nobel Prize in economics in 2012. The key idea behind cooperative game theory is that there is a game in which players are cooperating to obtain an outcome or a gain. The players of the game form coalitions to achieve the gain. Uh, some players may contribute more to the coalition than others, and Shapley values is a fair way to attribute the total gain to the players based on their marginal contributions to a specific coalition. Uh, in the context of explaining machine learning explanations, uh, explaining the model output is the coalition game, the prediction is the gain or the payout, and the input features are the players that cooperate with each other uh, to help the model arrive at a prediction. Shapley value axioms guarantee the fair allocation of gain among members of the coalition. Uh, there are full college courses on cooperative game theory, but just to give you a rough idea on the axioms that need to be satisfied by Shapley value solution, uh, we will quickly mention uh, the axioms over here. Uh, dummy, if a player never contributes to the game, then it must receive uh, zero attribution or zero credit. Uh, symmetry, if two players are interchangeable, um, then they will receive equal attribution or equal credit. Uh, efficiency, that the attribution must add to the total gain. Uh, additive, additivity, if a model uh, F is the sum of two other models, uh, G and H, then Shapley value calculated for the sum model is the sum of the Shapley values for model J and H. And then finally, local accuracy. To help us understand how SHAP assigns feature importance, uh, let us take a look at this example of a model tasked with a credit decision based on four features, uh, income, credit history, no late payments, and number of credit products. And let us for uh, each, let us say that for each possible combination of the features, we know what the prediction is. So uh, to understand the feature contribution of income, we measure the impact of adding income to every possible combination um, of other features. Uh, the idea being is that order matters and that once I start with uh, credit history, uh, every new feature I learn marginally increase or marginally decrease the likelihood of the prediction being in uh, one direction or another. The fairest contribution of the feature income is the average contribution of income over all possible subsets. Uh, note that finding the marginal contribution for each possible combination is expensive and the implementation of SHAP uh, has to employ some level of approximation and some level of sampling to make it possible to answer uh, the, uh, the question of the marginal value of income to the prediction within a reasonable amount of time. Note that there are uh, different implementations of SHAP optimized for different use cases. Um, Tree Explainer computes the SHAP values for tree-based models, such as the decision trees, random forest, the light GPM, etc. Uh, this uh, code snippet here shows you how simple it is to call Tree Explainer. You just pass in your tree-based model, and uh, that's it. You established an explainer object that you're able to uh, uh, use for your analysis. 
This slide shows a couple of SHAP variants that are specifically designed to support deep learning models. Uh, deep Explainer and Gradient Explainer. They do have um, variations on how they're implemented uh, underneath, but they're, they both are uh, serving the same purpose, if you will, of uh, having uh, the ability to create a SHAP explanation for deep learning models. Kernel Explainer or Kernel SHAP is a model agnostic SHAP implementation that under the hood includes some implementation of LIME and combines it with SHAP values logic. Generally, you probably want to use model specific versions of SHAP like TreeSHAP for tree based models and Deep Explainer for deep learning models, then uh, use uh, Kernel SHAP as a uh, last resort because it is a bit more expensive to run. And the more targeted alternatives of SHAP have optimizations that you do want to take advantage of if you can. Uh, SHAP offers a lot of charts to help us visualize explanations. Uh, this specific force plot used to visualize a single instance uh, shows features uh, pushing the prediction in one direction are in blue, and features pushing the prediction in the opposite direction are in red. The size of individual feature uh, represent the magnitude of the feature importance. So LSAT is more important than PT ratio, and um, directionally LSAT is pushing the prediction opposite of RM and age and everything else on the blue side of the chart. Another version of the force plot is a bit more interactive and helps us visualize the entire data set. Note the drop down option in the middle of the notebook, uh, allowing us to choose variations on the plot. Uh, this is, there's not enough room for us to show all the options on the slide. I just wanted to call out the interactive uh, nature of this uh, SHAP visualization. Uh, here's a, another uh, SHAP visualization, the dependence plot, and it shows how a single feature affects the output of the model. The summary plot communicates uh, global feature importance uh, for the entire model. The most important features are on top and the least important features are at the bottom. Uh, this plot shows an example of pairwise interaction between two variables, age and sex. In this case, we see the number of red uh, females by age, as well as the number of blue males by age. When evaluating the usage of SHAP, it is important to understand the pros and cons of the method. Uh, we will start with the pros. The first thing that SHAP has going for it, it is uh, uh, widely cited in the literature. At the time of this recording, uh, there were over 2,000 citations found on Google Scholar. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is hard to find a paper on explainable AI without some reference of Lime and also SHAP as well. Uh, we can infer from the number of citations that SHAP is well understood by the research community. It is also uh, relatively to understand for practitioners as it is well documented, and it is relatively easy to implement. It comes with powerful visualization tools, and uh, also it has some theoretical background that gives us some assurance that the uh, explanation that it's providing is based on some type of logic and theory uh, that we can understand and refer back to. Uh, in terms of the cons of using SHAP, the uh, primary issue we should be concerned about is that it's computationally expensive. Uh, this is particularly the case for um, large data sets with a large number of features. Uh, the last item on the cons list is that SHAP has been shown to be vulnerable to adversarial attacks. Uh, in this paper by Dylan Slack and his co-authors, they illustrated a technique for intentionally training bias classifiers that's based its decision on racial attributes in a way that was not detected by SHAP. The key takeaway from our brief uh, tour of SHAP is that SHAP is a great tool that has made important contributions to the field of explainable AI. Its popularity in academic research means that it's relatively well understood compared to other methods. It includes many useful visualizations and has some theory to back up the explanations that it's providing. Uh, it is expensive to run and uh, it is a unifying method as well. So don't think of it as an alternative to line 